do tornadoes really twist? Question and answers about tornadoes and hurricanes, the hurricane edition. By Melvin and Gilda Berger. Illustrated by Higgins Bond. This is the title page. Here are the contents and a brief introduction from Melvin and Gilda. Hurricanes. What and why? What is a hurricane? A large donut-shaped storm with heavy rain and strong winds blowing around a calm center. Hurricanes are the biggest and most destructive storms on Earth. What is the difference between hurricanes and tornadoes? Hurricanes are huge. Tornadoes are much smaller. Hurricanes are made up of many thunderstorms and rain clouds with heavy rainfall. Tornadoes, on the other hand, are formed by one thunderstorm and have little rain. Hurricanes form over warm ocean water. Most tornadoes form over land. How are hurricanes like tornadoes? Both have strong winds blowing around in circles rather than in straight lines. Both usually keep moving and both have very strong updrafts that carry warm, moist air high up in the atmosphere. What happens before a hurricane? Winds blow hard and there is a lot of moisture in the air. The level of the sea rises and the waters get very rough. As the hurricane builds, the ocean rises dangerously high with huge waves called ocean swells. How is a hurricane born? An area of low pressure forms over a tropical sea. The sun beats down and warms the water to at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This warms the air. It also adds lots of moisture to the air. The warm, moist air starts to rise. The upward movement of the air soon forms a cluster of thunderstorms and rain clouds with heavy rains and thunder and lightning. Sometimes these storms and clouds come together in a particular way and a hurricane is born. How does a hurricane develop? Warm, moist air continues to rise. The updraft sucks in still more air. The rushing air starts to spin around in gigantic spiral winds. When the winds reach a speed of 39 miles an hour, it's a tropical storm. Every year, about 10 tropical storms form in seas off the coast of the United States. In about 6 of every 10 tropical storms, the rainfall keeps getting heavier. At the same time, the spinning winds blow faster and harder. When the wind reaches 74 miles an hour, the tropical storm becomes a hurricane. How big are hurricanes? Most are about 340 miles across. The very largest hurricanes form in the Pacific Ocean. They may have diameters greater than 1,000 miles. Hurricanes also extend way up above the sea level. Monster hurricanes may reach as high as 10 miles into the air. How many hurricanes form every year? Worldwide, about 45 hurricanes form in tropical seas. They usually move in curved paths westward and away from the equator until they reach cooler water and die out. An average of about five hurricanes form in the Atlantic Ocean every year. Where does the word hurricane come from? Probably from the Spanish word huracan, but there may be other sources. According to Guatemalan folklore, the god of stormy weather is Hunracan, and the god of thunder and lightning is Huracan. In Suriname, people use the word Hiroacan to mean devil. Any way you look at it, hurricane spells trouble. How fast do hurricane winds blow? At least 74 miles an hour. In fact, a storm isn't called a hurricane until its winds reach this speed. 
Around the center of the hurricane, the wind speed may reach speeds as high as 150 miles an hour. Only the mighty winds of a tornado blow faster and harder. In which directions do hurricane winds blow? Counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Do hurricanes stay in one spot? No. Almost all Atlantic Ocean hurricanes work their way west and north. Often the hurricane's heavy winds and pouring rains crash down with great fury on Atlantic Ocean coastlines. How long does it take for a hurricane to pass overhead? Nearly 10 hours. For the first four hours or so, pounding rains and strong winds move through the area. The storm topples trees, destroys houses, wrecks cars, and tears down electrical lines. Pieces of debris shoot past like bullets. Then suddenly, the wind and rain stop while the calm center of the hurricane passes overhead. The peace may last from a few minutes to an hour or so. Then the other part of the storm arrives. The winds are often as powerful as before, but blown from the opposite direction. It may be another five hours before the weather finally clears. What is the eye of a hurricane? The calm center of the hurricane. On average, the eye of a hurricane is about 14 miles across. The eye, in a way, is like the hole in a giant donut surrounded by extremely fast-blowing winds of the hurricane. The eye shifts within the storm as the entire storm moves forward. Why is the eye dangerous? Because it tricks you into believing the storm is over. Some people go outdoors when the calm center passes overhead. Then they may be injured or killed when the other half of the hurricane arrives. But the eye can also be a blessing. Sailors often use the calm as a chance to tie their boats down before the rest of the storm moves in. And birds often fly safely in the eye of the hurricane. How fast do hurricanes travel? About 12 miles an hour. In one day, a hurricane may cover about 300 miles. From space, the swirling clouds of a moving hurricane look much like a spinning top sliding over sea and land. How long do hurricanes last? About 10 days. The record is about a month. A hurricane starts to fade as it runs out of heat or moisture. A hurricane moving over colder ocean waters cools off. Less rain starts to fall. When it passes over dry land, it loses its supply of moist air. The winds gradually slow down, even though the rainfall and flooding may continue. Soon the weather clears and the hurricane is over. Do tornadoes and hurricanes ever occur together? Yes, often. As many as one of every four hurricanes contains at least one tornado, and some hurricanes produce many tornadoes. In fact, the worst damage of Hurricane Andrew in August 1992 may have come from tornadoes within the hurricane. Even though tornadoes and hurricanes occur together, most of these tornadoes are weaker than those that form over the Midwestern United States. What are hurricane rain bands? Spirals of thick, heavy clouds that unleash torrents of rain. Between the rain bands are light clouds that produce little or no rainfall. Do hurricanes usually bring lightning? Yes, mostly in the rain bands. The powerful winds, hard rains, and swirling clouds of a hurricane electrify the clouds. Giant sparks of electricity flash within a cloud, from one cloud to another, or from a cloud to the ground. We see these towering sparks as lightning. How much rain falls from a hurricane? Lots. The rain in a typical hurricane makes the water in a swimming pool rise about 9 inches. But a big hurricane can dump as much as 20 inches over a given area. That's about half as much rain and snow as New York City gets in a whole year. 
Hurricanes pick up enormous amounts of water vapor, about 2 billion tons per day, from the oceans. High in the air, this water vapor turns to rain. When it falls, it produces some of the world's heaviest rainfalls. Which hurricane poured down the most rain? The hurricane of March 15th to 16th, 1952, at Salaus Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. Over 73 inches of rain fell. The record rainfall in the U.S. occurred during Hurricane Dennis in 1981. Florida got a one-day soaking of 20 inches. What is the danger of these huge amounts of rain? Floods. Hurricane floods cause tremendous damage and loss of life. Also, their bad effects last long after the hurricane's rain and wind have stopped. Hurricane Diane is an example. The storm lasted from August 7th to the 21st in 1955. It didn't do much harm when it first came ashore, but its heavy rainfall left vast areas of Pennsylvania, New York, and the New England states underwater. The floods killed 200 people and caused some $700 million of damage. What is a storm surge? The sharp rise of ocean water due to a hurricane. When a storm hits, the sea may rise as high as 25 feet above normal high tide. Hurricane winds push on the water, piling it higher and higher, much like a snowplow pushing on a growing mound of snow. Also, the low pressure inside the hurricane pulls on the water, raising the level like water sucked up through a straw. The highest storm surge on record occurred in Bathurst Bay, Australia in 1899. The water rose to the height of a four-story building. Are storm surges dangerous? They sure are. Some experts say that 9 of every 10 people who die in hurricanes are killed by storm surges. Most drown. The huge solid wall of water sweeps over beaches and other low-lying land areas. The surge washes away people, as well as buildings, trees, piers, and roads. The floodwaters stay on land long after the hurricane passes. Since ocean water contains salt, many growing plants die. The salt and other chemicals left in the soil harm future crops and seep into wells and underground water supplies. This may make water unfit to drink for a long time. Where do hurricanes get their names? At first, hurricanes were named after saints. Then, early in the 20th century, an Australian meteorologist started to give hurricanes the names of people he didn't like. Around 1950, meteorologists began using only female names. Since 1979, hurricane names follow the alphabet during each season, alternating between male and female names. Hurricanes, when and where. Where do most hurricanes form? Over tropical oceans, usually within 1,000 miles of the equator. They're called hurricanes when they form in the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, or the Caribbean Sea. But those that form in the western part of the North Pacific Ocean near China and Japan are called typhoons. In the Bay of Bengal and the Northern Indian Ocean, people say they're cyclones. And in the Pacific Ocean around Australia, the same storms have a funny name, Willy Willies. When is hurricane season? From June through November in the Northern Hemisphere and from November through April in the Southern Hemisphere. During these months, the surface of the sea is at its warmest, about 80 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Which hurricane stands out as one of the most powerful? Hurricane Camille. This storm struck the Mississippi and Alabama coast on August 17th to 18th, 1969. Its winds blew a steady 200 miles an hour with even stronger gusts. Storm surges of 25 feet pounded the land, knocking over everything in their paths. Which was the worst hurricane year? 
The year 1955. Twelve major storms killed about 1,500 people and destroyed some $2 billion worth of property. The best year was 1983 with only four hurricanes. The dark blue area shows where most hurricanes form. The arrows show the direction the hurricanes travel. Where do many of the worst hurricanes occur? The Bay of Bengal and India. The land level is very low here and storm surges sweep over the coast. Millions of fishermen, farmers, and their families are in great danger whenever a cyclone heads their way. The city of Calcutta, with its millions of people, is often caught in the path of the floodwaters. Which hurricane caused the worst loss of life? The one that hit the Bay of Bengal on November 13, 1970. A 40-foot storm surge plowed across the land, killing some 300,000 people. In the United States, about 6,000 people died when a hurricane hit the city of Galveston, Texas on September 8, 1900. But some experts disagree. They say the actual number is closer to 12,000. Which hurricane helped start a new country? The one that struck the Bay of Bengal in November 1970. Storm waters flooded 6,000 acres, destroying many villages and killing thousands. The people blamed the government for not warning them of the storm and for taking too long to send help. Their fury led to a revolution. Within a few months, the people had formed a new country called Bangladesh. Which United States hurricane caused the most damage? Hurricane Andrew in August 1992. The storm wrecked 200,000 homes and businesses, left nearly 200,000 people homeless, and did over $30 billion in damage. The good news is the low death toll. Because of timely warnings, the storm killed only 53 people. How do experts spot and track hurricanes? With satellites and airplanes in the air, buoys and ships at sea, and radar and other equipment on land, meteorologists follow all tropical storms that might become hurricanes. Who are hurricane hunters? People who fly planes into and around hurricanes. Hurricane hunters measure the hurricane's energy, speed, and direction. They radio reports back to the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. Here, experts plot the hurricane's path, issue warnings, and forecast the path and strength of the storm. What instruments do hurricane hunters use? Radar and drop sonders. Radar bounces radio waves off the raindrops within the hurricane. The time it takes for the radio waves to get back to the radar shows the storm's size, position, speed, and direction. Drop sonders are small packets of measuring instruments with tiny radio transmitters that hang from small parachutes. Hurricane hunters drop them in and around the storm. As they fall, each drop sponder radios valuable information back to the plane. How do meteorologists rate hurricanes? By the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale. For wind, uh, wind, wind speed is category 1, 74 to 95 miles per hour, with a surge height of 4 to 5 feet. Category 2 is 96 to 110 miles per hour, with a surge height of 6 to 8 feet. Category 3 is 111 miles per hour to 130 miles per hour, with a storm surge of 9 to 12 feet. Category 4 is 131 to 155 miles per hour with a surge height of 13 to 18 feet. And a category five is over 155 miles per hour with a surge height of over 18 feet. What is a hurricane watch? A national weather service alert that a hurricane might reach land within two days. People should tune into radio or television to find out about the storm's progress. 
What is a hurricane warning? A National Weather Service alert that a hurricane is expected within 24 hours. People who live near the shore are usually told to go inland where it's safer. How do people at sea get a hurricane warning? Usually by radio or television. People on small boats near the coast may also see flag signals on shore. The signal for an approaching hurricane is two square red flags with black centers, one above the other. Two red lanterns with a white one in between give the same warning at night. Is hurricane damage getting worse? Yes. Most people are moving to coastal areas, which is where hurricanes do the most damage. As this continues, more houses, cars, and roads are being wrecked by hurricanes. Are hurricane injuries getting worse? No. Every year, the scientists at the NHC get better at sending out warnings. With enough notice, people can either prepare for the storm or flee. The results are good. The number of people hurt or killed by hurricanes is going down. What should you do before a hurricane? Get out as soon as you're told to do so. But until then, or until the storm comes, put tape crisscross on windows to prevent flying glass and put boards over big windows. Store water in bathtubs, pails, and bottles in case the water supply is cut off or polluted. Pick up toys, tools, flower pots, and other small objects outside the house. Store them in a safe place where they won't blow around and cause damage. Prepare a battery radio and a flashlight for use if the power goes off. What should you do during a hurricane? Stay indoors. Keep away from the windows and follow the storm's progress on the radio. Beware the eye of the hurricane. Don't let the calm trick you into thinking the storm is over. It isn't over until the second half of the hurricane passes. What should you do after the hurricane? Stay out of disaster areas. Don't get in the way of first aid and rescue workers. Never touch a loose or dangling wire. A live electric wire can strike you down. Report dangerous situations like this to the police. Do hurricanes do any good? Yes, in spite of the destruction they cause, hurricanes help maintain the heat balance throughout the world. The heavy winds help carry heat from the tropics to the polar regions. Like a safety valve, hurricanes release excess energy and spread it out. Hurricane rains also bring lots of fresh water for crops and replenish groundwater. Here is an index of all of the different information that is covered in this book. About the authors, the Bergers live in the northeastern United States, where tornadoes rarely strike. They do travel quite a bit, however, and most recently experienced a powerful twist the powerful twisting winds of a tornado on a trip to North Carolina. The end.